my name is Jiří Olša. I work for Isovalent. I work on uh, Linux kernel and Tetragon. Uh, this presentation is um, basically how easy or how hard is to lose the execution of PPF program that is attached to uh, some of our uh, tracing probes. So the tracing probes that we have that allow to attach a uh, BPF program. Uh, so they have like different attach layer. So there's different code being executed uh, for K-probe, U-probe. And so each code has like sort of different, sometimes similar condition where you can actually drop uh, the execution of the probe and the final BPF program will not get uh, executed. Uh, it's also important to get some notification. So I will actually show you some of the probes do carry the, the counter that gets incremented anytime uh, we lose the probe. And uh, I will show you how actually how to get that counter and uh, how to see the stats. Uh, the motivation for this actually happened uh, some time ago where we were not very smart in picking up uh, probes in the Tetragon, and uh, we chose to put the K-probe on the put task track. Uh, the only problem was that K-probe don't allow nesting. Uh, so once you have one K-probe running on the CPU, uh, you cannot get another K-probe uh, running on that same, same CPU being nested. So what happened was like, if you read the call chain uh, from the bottom, our first K-probe on wake up new task uh, got executed. The BBF program uh, was running at some point, uh, the IRQ triggered and part uh, of that IRQ uh, was uh, the RCU cleanup and RCU cleanup uh, did the cleanup for the task track and it hit uh, our second probe, which uh, was actually dropped because of the K-probe nesting. Fortunately, as you can see from the uh, last function in that call chain, we did increment, it did increment uh, some of the counter inside uh, the K-probe object, which until recently was, we were actually not able to get that counter. Uh, it was on the uh, K-probe uh, layer. Um, at the moment, the patch get merged and we are actually able uh, to retrieve the number uh, from the uh, K-probe objects. So uh, if you run the BPF to link, and if your K-probe is uh, attached uh, through the perf link, so you, you need to have like link object, uh, part of the information that now we store uh, at, the, at the link is the missed counts and we allow to uh, retrieve it uh, to the user space. So if you run the BPF to link, uh, if your missed counters is uh, different than the zero, you will actually uh, see it uh, as a missed and the number in the output. The other number, uh, the other counter that we have uh, whenever we fail to execute the BPF program is uh, the recursion uh, misses counter, uh, which is uh, specific for BPF program. And that's actually another sort of check that we have after we actually get through the uh, initial probe execution. Then we have uh, other sorts of uh, check which if they fail, we increment that number and the BPF program is not executed, but we get, we get notified. I will get uh, to that later. So I will go through uh, some of the probes uh, that we are using and like uh, show where in that code, you can actually uh, drop the execution. So let's start with the K-probe. K-probe is basically perf event. And so you have like perf event uh, object, you create a uh, perf event uh, for the K-probe and you attach the BPF program to it. You can do it like the old way using just directly the IOCTL, but if you use the perf link, uh, among other benefits, you will actually get access uh, to the missed counters. So whenever the K-probe is dropped, you will get, uh, you will have uh, the way to actually retrieve uh, that number. Uh, so K-probe, the, like the attach layer code, that the code that gets first executed is coming in uh, three flavors. And basically it depends 
what do you want to attach? If you are attaching uh, to the beginning of the function and you have a trace on your system, which you probably have, and the object, like uh, where you're putting the K-probe, is compiled with the F-trace flex, so there are the hooks for the F-trace, then your attach layer will be the F-trace code, and it looks, uh, it looks like this. So the function gets executed, it goes directly to the F-trace, F-trace does the magic, as far as I know, it doesn't drop. And there are two checks uh, that we do uh, at the moment. First one is uh, F-trace handler speci uh, specific check that actually uh, checks if we are nesting uh, the F-trace handler uh, in the execution context, uh, meaning like tasks, soft IRQ, hard IQ, NMI, and it should not allow nesting like within one single execution context in on one CPU. I'm saying should because at the moment there's a small glitch. It actually allows one nesting uh, of the uh, uh, of the execution in the in the same context. It doesn't matter much uh, for the capros because the next check right away is the capro running, and that's the hard check that will actually not allow uh, like nesting of the capros uh, on the same CPU. So if we, even if we nest. Uh, it will actually uh, drop the execution on the capro running check. It will increment the counter, which we can we can now uh, retrieve and drop the execution. If not, it continues to execute the capro. So that's the ftrace attach layer. We have two more layers, like for everything else. So if you are not attaching uh, to the beginning of the function, uh, or if your object is not compiled with the ftrace flex. Uh, there are uh, two other ways of executing K-probe. Uh, one is through uh, the breakpoint layer in three, and that can get optimized uh, to like single uh, single jump. So going through the uh, breakpoint code, it looks like this. Uh, the checks is basically just the uh, generic uh, nesting check. So uh, basically, it won't allow nesting of the K-probe on the on the same CPU. Uh, the optimized K probe, it, if it gets optimized, looks something like this. So there's no there's no breakpoint. There's just jump uh, to the trump line, which which eventually calls uh, optimized callback. And again, there's just this uh, simple uh, simple check if we are nesting uh, the K probe on the on the CPU. So if you get through the attach layer. Mm, the handler of the K probe is actually called, and that one is responsible for executing uh, the BPF program. Uh, there are no surprises, uh, like some other drops, other than uh, reaching the uh, reentry check. We have like two types of reentry for BPF programs. I will get to that later. Uh, K probe is actually uh, ad uh, using uh, the check that will not allow to run. Uh, another BPF program if there's already like another one being executed. If that fails, we go and increment the pair program uh, counter. If that pass, we will actually execute uh, the BPF program. So that was the entry probe. The return probe is uh, quite uh, similar in that case that to get it actually uh, running, you need to hit the K probe first. So. It follows the same condition uh, as as you hit like when you install the K-probe. On top of that, uh, the K-probe, at least on the x86, is now implemented through the red hook. So there's this problem that we just discussed in previous uh, presentation that the, you can get uh, you can run out of the instances in, in the red hook, and in that case, you will drop the event as well. But you, uh, you increment the counter, so you actually get some uh, notification uh, about that. Uh, if you get uh, through the attach layer for the K-probe, uh, the rest of the code executing the BPF program is basically the same as uh, for the standard K-probes. We do check if there's another program uh, running on the CPU. If there's not, we execute. If, if, if we fail, we just increment the counter and go away. So that was standard K-probe. We now have K-probe multi to attach 
uh, Kpro programs. Uh, Kpro multi is based on F probe, uh, which is based on F trace. So basically, the execution looks uh, like this: you uh, you attach only the entries of the functions, and you go through F trace uh, to the callback, and the only check uh, on the attach layer. Uh, that we have at the moment is that F trace test recursion trilog function that should uh, prevent uh, the recursion in the execution context. But we don't have any other uh, any other check like we do for Kprobe. So using Kprobe multi is on the attach layer. It's more uh, permissive than the Kprobe. It is uh, not so permissive when you want to uh, execute uh, the actual program. So when you get through the attach layer code. Uh, following code gets executed that's responsible for executing the BPF program. And we have the BPF proc active uh, variable check, which is like, uh, won't allow the nesting of the BPF program uh, on the same CPU if there's already uh, one running. So yeah, uh, we get the counter incremented if we fail or we execute on the BPF program. That was too much. So that's uh, that's K probes uh, for U probes or U probe multi. The situation is uh, slightly better. Uh, basically, for entry U probes, uh, we don't have any uh, missed counts. We don't even have like counter uh, uh, that we would uh, we would carry. Uh, the only glitch is there's also number of nested uh, uh, return U probes that you can. Uh, you can attach if you there's like hard coded number at the moment 64 if you uh, if your program is like nesting more than 64 times and uh, gets the uh, return new probes installed that counter uh, will actually overflow and you will get the uh, you will get the message in the uh, kernel log and that uh, return new probe will be actually lost but we don't we don't have the counter that we would and uh, that we would trace it so next probe is the uh, trace point basically uh, we have like uh, two flavors perf and raw uh, the perf perf one is basically when the trace point you are attaching to is perf f trace uh, event so it basically prepares uh, the buffer uh, of the uh, of the arguments uh, to get the buffer, it actually needs to allocate it. It does the uh, static allocation, uh, which can fail, and that function perf trace buff alloc is called like from uh, other processing of uh, software events. So uh, it can actually happen that uh, this one might fail and it just uh, goes away. Uh, the rest of the is just executing the BPF program with the BPF proc active check. So the same as uh, for the K probes. The raw trace points are uh, easier, are uh, more lightweight. Basically, we don't use the perf F trace layer to attach. We take the callback and use the trace point API to attach like directly to the trace point. And there are no surprises there other than uh, uh, we just check uh, the nesting before we execute the program. And this is the other kind of uh, re-entry checking that we are uh, doing. So the first one for the K-probes was like, we won't allow nesting uh, of BPF program execution on the same CPU. This one actually allows that unless it is the same program. So we will just prevent uh, nesting of the programs uh, of the same program on the same CPU. If it's another program, we, we allow it uh, to execute. Uh, perf event, we also uh, allow to attach uh, BPF programs uh, uh, to hardware software events uh, and the overflow routine basically executes the BPF uh, program and there are no extra checks other than the BPF projective so we won't allow a nested execution on the same CPU for that so no surprises there and uh, last one that I actually covered but not least is the BPF uh, trump lines so BPF trump lines works uh, on the top of the 
F trace, uh, it's like a uh, generated trampoline by the BPF code and it's generated so it can like uh, execute the BPF programs attached uh, to the function. And so it gets called like from the entry uh, uh, through the F trace direct interface. And before executing uh, the program, there's actually check uh only the only check is there is like for the nesting which uh for the pair program uh specific nesting so we won't allow a uh, single program to get uh, nested but like you can have nested execution of different program uh on the on the same uh, cpu so this is how we uh go like through the attach layer for uh, various uh probes now about the checks before we execute uh, the bpf program so at the moment we have like uh two types of these checks first one more permissive is per program and as i said it allows you uh to execute like multiple uh nesting of multiple bpf programs on the same cpu as long as they are like different uh different bpf programs the other check is the per CPU, the BPF protective variable, which is much more uh, restrictive. And once you have like program being executed on the same CPU and it gets interrupted, uh, this check will uh, like prevent of running any other BPF program uh, on the uh, on the CPU. It's also used uh, by BPF syscalls to actually like disable uh, BPF program while updating uh, maps or uh, well, map, map update and map uh, delete uh, from, from just some particular uh, map types. So yeah, it's, it's used also not to uh, mutually exclude the BPF programs, but also uh, like to disable the instrumentation uh, from the uh, BPFC scores for, for some operations. So. As it looks like the, the list of the uh, probes uh, that using the per program and per CPU check uh, looks like this. Uh, I recently, well, recently, some time ago, uh, sent a change to actually uh, move the KPro multi uh, to be, to have the, at the moment, the KPro multi before you execute, it, it has the per CPU protection. So it won't allow execute the BPF program if there's like another one running. Uh, but it looks like we can actually move it to per program, which would actually fix that, uh, fix that uh, use case that I showed at the beginning. So what happened there is uh, that we have like two K probes, one on the wake up new task, the other one on put task track. Uh, you ex execute the first one and within the first one there's REQ and you execute uh, the put task track. And at the moment, if you are attached with the K-probe, there's the K-probe running check and the second VP program is not executed. If we move it to be attached by K-probe multi, at the moment, it will not get executed as well. It will pass the attach layer, like the, the check, uh, the K-probe multi attach layer is much more permissive. It will, it will actually get to try to run the BPF program, but it will fail on the BPF proactive check because there's already like in the task execution context, there's already program running. But if we change it to be per, per program, we actually would get the, the, other, uh, the other program running. So that's, uh, we had some discussion uh, on the initial page that uh, with that change, you can get some really weird traces, especially when that F trace uh, re-entry function, the trialog uh, can allow the nesting. Uh, so I guess we need to have the discussion again, and I'm planning uh, to send the page. One more thing I'd like to mention, while I was actually uh, adding the support uh, for the counter uh, of the missed execution, Andrew asked if he can actually have uh, like uh, counters extra counters uh, for the for the function. So what happened is that before we had the K-probe multi, uh, the missed counter will be uh, like per K-probe, which means per link. So each K-probe uh, represents a function. So you can actually say 
uh, which, country, uh, which function you lost, like the execution name. For k probability, we have, you can have like 1,000 functions under one link, but there's still one counter if one of those functions actually get lost. So we don't have like, you are not able to say which function uh, you lost. So uh, at the moment, I don't see any other way like there, if, if you want to keep the counters per, uh, per the function, uh, if we are going to increment that counter, we actually need to do some hash look lookup based on the IP. So that's something I'm, uh, I'm checking on. Uh, so it's not like cheap to keep that counter. Uh, on the other hand, we just lost the BPF program execution, so we saved some cycles. So maybe it's acceptable to actually increment it, or maybe we can just do it optional, and everyone can enable it if needed. And yeah, that's basically what I have. If you have any questions. Uh, thank you for a uh, good presentation. And, and uh, I think that uh, you can use that the F probe uh, instead of K probes uh, in that case, that are for the, so that are only for the single uh, function tracing, uh, uh, like a single uh, K probes, you can use that the F probe. Mm. Yeah, then uh, uh, the uh, the nested check will be gone uh, only. It, only use that are the, uh, also the context-based uh, nest ch nesting check uh, by your F. Uh, ah, the function is going away. F trace. Hmm? The function is going away. That uh, recursion check is will no longer be there. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry. I'm sorry. I might have misunderstood. So you are saying we can get away, like we can remove that check or. Yeah, yeah, so those are the k-probes. Uh, using that the k-probes, uh, you uh, this means that there are the k-probes. There, let's say, introduce that are the k-probes nesting check because that the k-probes uh, endured uh, user. Uh, let's say that are the user uh, program will not uh, nested, be nested, mm -hmm. so that the user program can access to the some global uh, variable or something like that. Yeah, uh, but uh, if you uh, wanna uh, if you use that or the F probe instead, then uh, uh, F probe is checking that the uh, nesting check on the same context, like uh, the let's say that are, so that's something like uh, <clears throat> if you uh, call or using that some uh, function which is uh, uh, say instrumented by your F probe from the the callbacks, that will be your uh, let's say uh, just skipped. Or ignored, uh, mm. but uh, um, if there there is some uh, what's it that there uh, interrupt uh, what's it interruption happened inside that there the, uh, program or something like that. In that case, that there the context will be uh, switched to the uh, interrupt uh, context. Right. Yeah. In that case, that there F probe can nest. Yes. Yeah. Um, first of all, I would not get rid of the. Uh... The F trace oh. recursion lock. I would not get rid of that. That's sure. really I. So after adding that, I stopped getting all these crazy crashes. The the so a little history before that little one time what allows two recursions. The history is because it, it's based off of the uh, preempt count. It tells you which context it is. Was it normal context, soft IRQ, IRQ, or NMI context? And sometimes there's tracing a trace point for a function. A function will be traced before the preempt count is updated. So it would actually, if you actually had a trace that actually happened while another trace is going on, it would detect as a recursion because the context hasn't been updated yet and it allowed in. And this showed up as bugs because you'll get, oh, I entered interrupt and then suddenly I didn't enter interrupt. And that like, but you see other interrupt calls and saying like, I'm missing the entering of the interrupt. And that's because uh, trace happened within another trace and the preamp count. But with Peter Zilstra's work that he's been doing with the no instrumentation thing, no function call should be ever called now without preempt count being updated. Last time I checked, I said, so I got rid of it and I found mm -hmm. out, no, it, there's some places that still do. I think they were all fixed. Did you, I remember we had a little conversation. So have you tried it? Uh, I just removing that yeah, I check? saw some work, but I, I didn't get like to, if, if he has something new about this, like if oh, there are I mean, changes. I wasn't sure if you tested it to see if it would trigger or if there was places that could actually call in the wrong context. 
so I tested just uh, like uh, for my use case, which was like that uh, I was able to get like uh, K probe nested invocation in the same uh, context. Like if I, if I had a task, uh, it uh, it hit the K probe through the F trace, and that uh, that code like the BPF program executed another another helper that that had, had a K probe on it. I got it as well, like in the same context. I but that's got... because you had the you still had this iteration in, right? Did you? I mean, did you remove the iteration the, the iteration check? So did you change the F trace the F trace recursion check to get rid of that single iter the transition bit? Ah, yeah, right. Uh, no, no, no. I no, I didn't. No, check no. That I'm one. saying that's what I'm saying is we. I asked you, could you try that to see if you're still? Ah, okay. I, or I could. I, I could didn't do get the test. I uh, could actually get rid of it. No, I didn't check that. If, it's, if no. that bug is no longer there, because mm. it was a workaround for a bug that should hopefully has been fixed. So I we see, could feel get rid of it. So it should not. It should not do the recursion bit. All right. So I'll let you know. I'll I'll put that as an action item for me. Okay. It should not be a problem. That that was a workaround. It wasn't okay. part of the design. Any other questions? Hey, uh, I just want to ask um, about this uh, 64 depth limit on, on U probes. That is applied to U pro, to the new U probe multi. So yeah, you mean on the U red probe, right? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. And sorry, what was the question? Uh, this one. Yeah, so the question is if if uh, if you use the new U red uh, U probe multi for to attach to the to the return probe, if you, if you if does the limit still applies or you can attach to like yeah, thousands yeah, it, of functions? Yeah, it does. It it still uses the the U probe player to. Uh, I mean, the U probe multi uh, matters for detach, but we still use like the U probe uh, layer, same as for the single U probe. So. It, it has the same right same yeah. okay thanks and once all right thank you